In this video, we are building the Back to the Future remote control with a working speed box. So we can see the actual speed of the car from the remote control. And yes, we will be using a real time machine. Well, here it is, my time machine. Wow, is it a DeLorean? It is, but that's not the important thing. The important thing is, this thing travels through time. Wow. This is the one with the winged doors, right? Yeah, it is. Can I open them? Uh, I guess. But the important thing is that this is a prototype. This is a prototype that we're building, and it travels through time. All I need to do is test it remotely. So I'll need to put a dog in the driver's seat and drive it directly at us at 88 miles an hour. And if my calculations are correct, it should disappear right before it runs us over. That doesn't sound crazy at all. But why 88 miles an hour? And where are you gonna get a dog? Hmm. All right, I'll make it 20 miles an hour and no dog. I don't even know why I thought of a dog, that's stupid. But what I do need is a remote control. So I'm gonna go pick one up at Code Makes It Go and I'll meet you back here tomorrow, okay? Wait, quick question. Yeah. What's this? Ah, that's the particle particle accelerator. It creates a small black hole just big enough for this car to travel through time. And it's trying to have a possible. Wow, black holes are heavy, Doc. Precisely. I thought of it right after I slipped on my bathroom floor and did the splits. I was incapacitated for a full week. That's why I call it the flux capacitor. Shouldn't it be called the flux capacitor? What? No. I sure hope he has the remote control I need. What's up, Doc? What can I help you with today? I like your store. It has that real uh, basement kind of vibe going for it. Anyway, I'm looking for a remote controller. Okay, sure. I think I have a couple of remotes. Let me go grab them for you. Hey, what's this for anyway? Yeah, it's for a DeLorean that I turned into a time machine. I'm going to be testing it out tomorrow by driving it directly at me and my friend. If my calculations are correct, it should just disappear just before it runs us over. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, as long as your calculations are correct, shouldn't be a problem. Hey, I have an idea. Why don't you put a dog in the driver's seat? Eh, something to think about. Anyway, you got your 2.4 gigahertz controller here. Controls multiple vehicles. Pretty safe bet. You got your vintage style one, six channels, pretty good. We have your car remote, pretty basic. Then we got your remote with all the options. You see anyone that you might like? These look pretty good, but do you have one that displays speed? What, like a speed display? Uh-huh. Huh. No, I don't have one of those, but I could make you one. Oh. That's gonna be a problem because I need it before the next segment of this video. Oh, that's no problem. All you have to do is select the chapters below and you can skip this whole build process and go back to the story. Or you could stay and watch, might learn something too. Hmm, skipping chapters, hey? That's kind of like a time machine for video, right? What the heck, I'll stay and watch. Maybe I will learn something. All right, let me put these remotes away and we'll get started. The plan for this build is pretty simple. We want the speed box in the time machine to transmit real speed to the remote control and be displayed. I plan to use the world's smallest GPS module to get the speed and a LoRa radio to transmit the speed to the remote control. Both of these modules were provided by Rayax and I'll talk more about them later. To get started, I will build the speed display first because it is used on Doc's remote control and on the speed box. Towards the end of the movie, the last digit wasn't working, but did near the beginning. Ours is going to work though. I'm using a one inch seven segment display with a common cathode. The problem with these is that each one has nine pins to connect, which would be a wiring nightmare. Fortunately, there's an app for that. I mean a micro. This is the TM1650. It can control up to four displays with only four wires. 
So I designed a little board and had PCB Way make it for me. In a couple of days I received it and it came out looking great. I got all the parts ready to build two of these. Using a little hot plate, I could solder on the chip pretty easily. Finally attached three of the displays. Surprisingly, this worked the first try, which is pretty rare for me. And on to the speed box. I found the perfect box for this on eBay. I marked the holes for the Arduino Uno using blue tape, then melted in threaded inserts. I added a power button and then cut out a section for the display. I used 6mm stencil material for the diffuser and simply pressed the display PCB into place. Next, I mounted the Arduino Uno with GPS and LoRa radio. Ran a quick test, and that was it. The lid has a hole cut out for the LoRa antenna and an extra SMA connector on the back for a GPS antenna. Second only to the DeLorean, the most iconic part of this movie was the controller. Watching this movie as a kid, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Unfortunately, the controller in the movie is very expensive and getting harder to find, but there are lots of similar looking ones like this one. After you source a controller, you will need a box that attached to the back. This is the Unibox Model 140, and the good news is you can still buy them today. The final piece you will need, aside from the common switches and buttons, is the Molex 1820 switch. This is the big old red button you see on Doc's controller. This one wasn't easy to find. In fact, I could only find a white one, so I designed and printed out the black one. I mounted this to the side along with the red toggle switch. Evenly spaced and marked the locations for the buttons and switches, then mounted the unit box to the back of the controller using another threaded insert. Now that the box is in place, I found a location for the 9 volt battery clips and tested them out. With that, I'm done modifying the controller housing, so I'll put it back together and screw on the unit box later. Like the speed box, I used an Arduino Uno. I countersunk the screws on the back of the box. I feel like I skipped some parts here, but I installed the power switch, lower radio, and potentiometer too. Each button on the side will be used to trigger a different function on our display. Now for the worst part of this project, routing all of these wires to make it look like Doc's controller. I only needed four wires to control my display, but the rest of these are just for show and won't connect to anything. Now onto building the display. I used the exact same display mount and diffuser as in the speed box then printed a temporary mount to get everything lined up. Once I was happy with the alignment, I traced everything out onto a sheet of aluminum and cut it out with a Dremel tool. Times like this is when I really wish I had a CNC machine. Afterwards, I assembled the display and mounted it to the controller. The final step in this build is attaching the wires to the back of the display. Here is a better shot of the four wires for communication, while all the rest are just for the show. After connecting the four wires to the PCB, I could finally test to see if this worked. And again, I was totally surprised that it did the first time. Now to run the GPS test. While I really wanted to use a Rayax GPS module, the output was only at 1 Hz. I switched to the Adafruit GPS shield that has a 10 Hz output rate. To test the GPS, I just drove around to ensure the speed box was updating. This also tested a LoRa communication in close range. But next, I wanted to test the long range of the LoRa. To do this, I placed the speed box in my car and just started walking. I programmed the first button to display the signal strength and the second button to display the signal to noise ratio. After a little bit of walking, we were a third of a mile away and the signal was still good at negative 92 decibels. So we kept walking and at a half a mile, the car was out of sight and we were still getting a good signal at negative 112 decibels. I'm really impressed with these little radios. Not only that, but their manuals are well written and very clean and are super easy to use by just using simple AT commands with serial. Most importantly, the radio is shaped like a dove. Okay, well maybe that wasn't the most important thing, but I do think it's cool. All right, back to the story, and be sure to stay to the end for the outtakes. Well, here it is, Doc, all done. I think it's everything you wanted. Wow, these are perfect. Thanks a lot, Code Mix Go. I better get going. My friend's probably waiting for me in the mall parking lot. Are you sure you don't need an instruction manual or something? It's pretty complicated. At least let me show you how to use it. Ah, uh, I'll figure it out. It looks easy enough. Besides, I play a rich scientist. All right, Doc. Well, let me know how it goes. Oh, be careful with that reset button. I haven't really tested that. All right, Marty. Record this. All we have to do is put the speed controller in the car, and we can watch the speed of the car on my remote control. All right? Let's go test this out.
Not me, the car, the car! All right, I think we're ready. When this thing hits 20 miles an hour, you're gonna see some serious poop. Yeah, I'll be mine, because the car's coming straight at us. Can we stand to the side? Oh, crap. I was trying to do a burnout for documentation purposes. Try that side button there. Did you read the manual? No. They said it should be easy enough. Why are there so many buttons on this? You know what? We don't need to do a burnout. Let's just do this normal. Is this what time travel looks like? I don't think... Okay, Christopher Lloyd, I think I for... I think I swapped the future and the present times. Now it's stuck in an infinite loop. Wow, Doc, this is heavy. Can you stop it? I'm not so sure. There is a reset button here. I'll try that. Well, here it is. My time machine. Wow, is it a DeLorean? There are a lot of people that helped me make this video possible. A huge thanks goes out to Zach at Rods and Bods. I can't believe that there is a car museum where you can rent the car for special events. If you are ever in the Denver area, or if your next event needs a centerpiece, check them out. They have cars from all kinds of movies. It's pretty amazing to see them all in one place. A big thank you goes to my nephew Aiden for playing Marty, and for my sister for being the videographer. I'd also like to thank Rayax for their amazing little modules. I'll definitely be using the lower modules in other projects. It's nice to have a module that just works the first time without any issues. And a special thanks for PCBWay for building me a PCB in a short amount of time, and it worked perfectly. And I'd also like to thank Unibox for a quick delivery, friendly service, and a really nice project box. And now, for the outtakes. Well, here it is. My DeLorean. I mean, damn it. What's this? That's the portable particle particle-center. <laughs> That's the portable particle accelerator. It creates a small black hole just big enough for this car to travel through time. It makes trying to travel possible. <laughs> Good God, I can't talk. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the future. I think we're done. I wish I had some audio. Yeah!